This is going to be why I love the King James Bible. And first, I'm going to talk about the Bible is a survival kit. God likens the Bible to five different foods. Proverbs 25.11 likens it to apples. 1 Peter 2.2 likens it to milk. Hebrews 5.14 likens it to meat. Matthew 4.4 4 likens it to bread. And Psalms 19.10 likens it to honey. The Bible has all the food you would need. And if we place the importance on Bible reading as much as we do on feeding our faces, then we would be Bible geniuses in a week. And Job 23.12 says, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. If you eat three times a day, then you should be at least reading the Bible four times a day. There should be a hunger and desire to see what God says in his words. While the King James Bible is likened to these good foods, the modern versions of the Bible can be likened to Big Macs and Monster Drinks and Cokes and Cotton Candy and other bad foods. But the King James Bible is what you should be reading. And not only this, but the Word of God is a lamp. Psalms 119.105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Men love the dark side, so they stay in the dark on what God says. While many claim to be afraid of the dark, most people are afraid of the light. They wouldn't crack open a Bible, and if they do, it's to put in something like a four-leaf clover or something they want to keep. The Bible says men love darkness rather than light. This is why a music video by a devil-possessed singer or something has billions of views on YouTube, but a good sermon will just have about 200. And God is the opposite of darkness. He is so much the light that in eternity there will be no need of the sun. And Revelation 22, 5 says, And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. The Bible is an instruction book on how to walk in the light as he is in the light. It's written by the light of the world. Not only this, but this Bible that we read is a fire. His word is a fire, as it says in Jeremiah 23, 29. Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord? If you have impure thoughts and your life is full of thorns and thistles and bad things, the Bible is a fire to burn that stuff away. If you are carrying sin, it will burn the fat off. Hebrews 12, 29 says God is a consuming fire. At the second coming, Jesus comes back in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. This same fire turns into that hell on earth that you read about in Isaiah 34. The written word and the living word are both associated with fire. The Bible is also a mirror. James 1.22 says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. The Bible is like a mirror in that it shows all the wrinkles and imperfections on your face and doesn't cover up anything for anyone. When you get into the modern versions of the Bible, it's like going through a mirror maze because you just don't know where you're at. Or compare the perverted Bibles to a house of mirrors. Every mirror you look in shows something different. But the King James Bible is sure. It doesn't change. The devil couldn't change it. CERN couldn't change it. But the word of God is also like a seed. 1 Peter 1.23 says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. When you distribute the word of God by handing out tracts and quoting verses, you are planting seeds in the heart of the hearer. The word of God is also like hammer and nails. Jeremiah 23.29 is not my word like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Ecclesiastes 12.11 the words of the wise are as goes and as nails fastened by the master of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. The word of God can break through any resistance. The hammer of Thor couldn't touch the hammer of God. The Bible knows us so good that it literally, literally nails us every time. It nails Satan, just like Jael pierced Sisera in the book of Judges, and just like how the cross was stuck into the place of the skull. 
The word of God is also like a sword. Hebrews 4.12 For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The Bible cuts you where it hurts, and it's the greatest weapon and the only weapon that is good to use on yourself. I believe in the King James Bible because it is the ultimate survival kit. I also be believe in it and love it because it tells the truth about the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. It shows me His Godhood. In 1 Timothy 3.16, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in the glory. So, see how plainly the Bible says, the King James Bible says, God was manifest in the flesh, referring to Jesus Christ being God revealed in the flesh. While the ASV, the annoying satanic version, or better known as the American Standard Version says, He who was manifested in flesh, taking out the word God, so you're like, He, who's He? Why couldn't they just say God was manifest in the flesh? The King James Bible gets the virgin birth right. In Isaiah 7.14 it says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. While the RSV, the really silly version, or better known as the Revised Standard Version, changes it to the young woman shall conceive. Do you not believe the Lord Jesus Christ is angry at how these Bible correctors are presenting him? and their counterfeit satanic Bibles. They also make him a sinner for being angry. In the King James Bible, it says this in Matthew 5.22, But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Your King James Bible plainly says, Whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Jesus Christ got angry, but it was for a cause. He had an excuse for being angry. The NIV, the noticeably idiotic version, says, But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. They take out the without a cause. Therefore, they try to make Jesus Christ a sinner because he got angry. I'll stick with the King James Bible that upholds the sinlessness of Jesus Christ. Some guy said to me one time, You're just being nitpicky. But if the modern versions of the Bible were lying about the character of their mother or their children, they wouldn't like the modern versions. Do you love Jesus Christ enough to stand up against the corrupt satanic Bibles? I believe the King James Bible because it stays true to the Savior. I also love the King James Bible because it is entertaining. How many times have you heard someone say the Bible is entertaining? Because people think the Bible is a boring list of names. I truly believe... The Bible is an entertaining book, even though 1 Chronicles may not be the most entertaining book in the world at times, but if you read through the parts you consider boring, you will find the most incredible stories. There are some strange and interesting things in the Bible. People forget the Bible is a supernatural book that talks about supernatural things that have happened in history. People make the mistake of thinking the world has always been and always will be just like it is now. They forget that people in Genesis live to be over 900 years old. I just love reading about Methuselah being 969 and Adam being 930, Seth being 912, Enos being 905, Canaan 910, Noah being 950. That is interesting and opens a whole line of thoughts about how smart these guys would have been seeing how they live more than 10 times longer than people do now. Most people look up to basketball players like LeBron James who is only 32 years old and he's considered old in his sport. If LeBron just had the longevity of just someone like Moses in the Bible, then he would finally be able to pass Michael Jordan. Moses never lost a step and he was over 100 years old. Deuteronomy 34 7 says that Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was not dim nor his natural force abated. I love the stories about the giants that have six fingers and six toes and the giant named Og who had a bedstead of iron. I love the stories about Moses bringing the plagues and the magicians trying to copy everything he does. And the story about Ehud stabbing that fat guy Eglon in the gut. You remember how God told 
Hosea to marry a whore and how the book of Psalms talks about God riding on cherubims. You probably didn't know God wrote on cherubims, but you would have if you read the Bible. I love the Bible because of the pictures and types. You probably didn't know the Bible had pictures, and I don't mean pictures in the sense of a children's book or the action Bible. Characters like Joseph are a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. Joseph had his clothes stripped. Jesus did as well. Joseph has his clothes dipped in blood. Jesus is clothed in a vesture dipped in blood. Joseph was put into a pit and brought back out. This pictures the Lord Jesus Christ going into the heart of the earth and resurrecting. Joseph was made second to Pharaoh at age 30. Jesus began his ministry at age 30. There are so many similarities that it can't be a coincidence. I love the Bible because of the way it is written. I like the these and the thous. I don't want my Bible to talk exactly like I talk. People are always saying I need the new versions because it takes out the these and the thous. But yeah, it also takes the salvation right out of the mouth of the Ethiopian eunuch and the thief on the cross and changes all the major doctrines of the Lord Jesus Christ. I love the Bible because the Bible itself knows how important it is. And the writer cares about you enough to give clear commands to read the words of God. Isaiah 34, 16 says, Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. 2 Timothy 2, 15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 1 Timothy 4, 13, Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Man doesn't like to read the Bible because it cuts him where it hurts. This is why the Bible is called a two-edged sword. It is like a mirror that shows what is on the inside of a man. The book lets man know that he is a sinner. And some of it is hard to take, but some of what's in it brings excitement and comfort. Just like it says in Revelation 10.9, it says, And I went unto the angel, and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it, and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Man wants to be the final authority, and the Bible corrector adjusts the Bible to fit his belief. A true Bible believer adjusts his belief to fit the Bible. The Bible gives clear commands not to take away from the words of the book. In Revelation 22:19, it says, And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. It not only gives a command to not take away the words, it also gives a command to not add to the words. Proverbs 30 verses 5 and 6 says, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Men who add and subtract from the words of God are doing nothing but corrupting your Bible. We shouldn't go to the Greek to make the book say what we want it to say. 2 Corinthians 2.17 says, For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God speak we in Christ. When a man corrects the book and tells you it says something it does not say, then that man is a liar. And Romans 3.4 says, God forbid... Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. We shouldn't correct the Bible, but we should let the Bible correct us. Just like 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. God wrote the book. Men wrote the words down as they were moved by the Holy Ghost, as it says in 2 Peter 1.21. And when man corrects the Bible, he is saying he is smarter than God. The Bible says the words of the Lord are pure words. If they are pure, then they don't need a simple man to correct them or make them easier to understand by changing what God says. If God promised to preserve them in Psalms 12, 7, then we shouldn't have a doubt that he will keep his words pure forever. And Matthew 24, 35 says, Heaven and earth shall not pass away, but my words shall not pass away. The word of God will stand forever. And when we read the Bible, we are spending time with eternity. Isaiah 40 and verse 8 says, The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of God shall stand forever. If you stay in the word of God, you will not wither. You will only prosper. 
Psalms 1, 2 says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. I love the Bible because any person from any period of time can pick it up, and it is still as up to date as a modern day newspaper or book. When you read the Bible, you read about a one world government and religion, which is trying to form right now. You read about the mark of the beast, and many forerunners for this have already started that we can see right now. I love the Bible because it is for all ages. Any person, no matter their age, can get something from the Bible. Children love the Bible stories about David and Goliath, John and the well, Adam and Eve, and the miracles of Jesus. And adults can get comfort through the scriptures and get doctrine from the scriptures when you start to learn doctrine and about the dispensations that makes the Bible come alive. Many people may call people like us bibliologists. They believe we worship the Bible. And Psalms 138 too says, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth, for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. We don't worship the Bible in the sense that we worship the Lord Jesus Christ. But it cuts it close. In this age we are in, the closest thing we can see to God outside of the invisible things of Him in nature is the words of God. It should be the words you place in such high regard and not the premium leather or the wide margins or the full yap or the font. It's the words. Whether they are on India paper or a napkin or a Bible app. I love the Bible because of the strange doctrine. Hebrews 13, 9 says, Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. Don't make all your studies and ministry about strange doctrines in the Bible, but it's good to know a little about all of them. It can also be interesting and entertaining to study them. All of the movies you grew up watching as a kid were just satanic knockoffs of real fantasy stories that happened in history or in the future. If you read the Bible, you will see stories that seem far-fetched or like a fantasy movie. A Bible believer shouldn't love science fiction. He should love science truth. The Bible has a lot to say about things like space travel. And at the rapture, we will go up through space faster than a speed of light in a glorified body through a sea of glass that has been stained red by the blood of Jesus Christ. Leviathan, which is Satan in his physical state, is up there in the great deeps, and he will be on your trail. And this is pictured when the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea with Pharaoh on their trail, who is referred to as a dragon in the book of Ezekiel. And to a lost man, that would sound crazy. And for most Christians, that would sound crazy. All they want to hear is God is good and God will get us through it. But they don't want to hear great stories like this to show how great and good God is. And most men only approach the Bible from a devotional standpoint. They throw out the doctrine and the meat and all the goodies. They want to make the entire Bible fit this age we are in now. We are in an age where we operate by faith and not by sight. This is why we don't get up every morning and see a cherubim waving a flaming sword like Adam and Eve's grandchildren did. They probably hit the baseball a little too close to the cherub and had to dare each other to go get it. And things were different in different time periods. Back then you could have a great, 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 great grandpa that was still alive. And back then people didn't just go out and kill raccoons and deers. They went out and killed giants. How often is it that you see your favorite preacher get took up with chariots of horses of fire and a whirlwind? People just forget that the Bible is a supernatural book and God is a supernatural God and supernatural things are going to happen in the Bible and in the future. And when you learn this, it helps you believe. Don't be so critical and skeptical of things just because you haven't heard them or because you seem or because they seem strange to you. Look into things and just because your favorite commentator rejected stuff doesn't mean you have to reject it. Proverbs 18.13 says, He that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. 
Hopefully the things I've said will encourage you to dig deeper into the Bible and realize it isn't just a book of names.